You are looking at the 2022 Audi RS e-tron GT. It is the top of the line and most powerful model in the e-tron GT lineup. It delivers 590 horsepower and 612 pound-feet of torque, but when using launch control, horsepower increases to 637, which is enough to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 3.3 seconds. The power is split between two motors located front and back, giving the RS e-tron GT quattro all-wheel drive capability. A 93.7 kilowatt-hour battery powers the electric motors. It is rated at 373 kilometers of range, although our testing has shown that you can easily do 400 or even 450 kilometers. The battery can be charged in just 22 minutes on a DC fast charger from 20% to 80%, and charging on a level 2 charger will take just 9.5 hours. It is 100% electric, and it delivers the kind of performance that buyers expect from a premium and top-of-the-line luxury electric sedan. Okay, so here we are in the 2022 Audi RS e-tron GT. So this is the new Audi electric sedan and it is the RS e-tron GT. So it is the most powerful, the quickest, the most expensive, the most exclusive version of the e-tron GT that you can get. And um, I mean, I've, I've I've had a lot of fun with this car this week. I mean, I've, I've, I've been driving a lot of electric cars back to back recently. I had the uh, Taycan 4S uh, a few weeks ago, and then I had the Taycan Turbo S, and I had a bunch of uh, other electric vehicles. So I'm uh, really getting into the EV mood, but this one is special and it's unique. It has a ton of power, which I'm hoping the road will open up right about now. Yes, it would. Jesus. Yeah. Um, that is unbelievable. So, 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds. Um, feels a bit faster than that. The e-tron, the RS e-tron GT is essentially the equivalent of the Taycan Turbo. So the entry level e-tron GT is like a Taycan 4S and Audi won't make uh, an equivalent of the Taycan Turbo S. So this will always be the fastest e-tron GT you can get. And as I said, I drove the Taycan 4S, I drove the Turbo S. This one is supposed to be in between and that's essentially what it is. Um, in terms of performance and pure straight line accelerations that's how it feels it feels kind of right in the middle um, but you know there's a certain point with accelerations when you get into that three second range you know 2.5 2.1 3 there, it, there's obviously a difference but it's not a difference that you really notice all that much when you accelerate with this car you know, you just, you can't, it's it's so difficult to describe. Let's just do a little bit, jeez. You know, you, you can't hear anything, right? So the only thing you, you feel, all of your senses are focused on the feeling of being thrown back into your seat. Your organs are, are kind of moving around. You can feel the skin on your face kind of go backwards a little bit. Um, you can feel it sort of crawling along your cheekbone. There's just no feeling like that. And when it comes to EV performance, the RS e-tron GT is everything you would want and more. It definitely has that out of this world feel that you get in a Taycan Turbo S or a Model S without it being as quick as those two. But I mean, it just delivers that, that incredible feeling. Now, 
Uh, performance is one thing. Now let's get into sort of the uh, the nitty gritty of the car. I've been I've had it for a week. Um, one thing I, I, I find on the sort of negative side of things is the practicality. I noticed this as well in the Taycan. Um, the Model S is more practical. Let's just get that out of the way. This is smaller, it's a bit shorter than an A7, um, but it's it's a lot less practical than an A7. I've had my toddler in the back, and uh, you know, I, getting her in and out is possible, but it's not easy. I've been bumping her head on the roof every morning and every evening. So, it's a car that you can use uh, for occasional family duties, but it's certainly not the the same level of practicality that you would find in a in a Model S or you know the e-tron SUV. Um, I really like the interior. I know the interior has gotten a few bad uh, bad critiques since this car came out. It's definitely different than what you find in a Taycan or a Model S. It's a lot less techy. So you do have physical buttons more so than you might be, that, that, that actually you expect. You have the, the center screen, but the whole bottom portion of the center console are physical buttons, um, which even in the a7 or the a6 it's two screens here it's it's physical commands i personally love it from a daily usable standpoint it's i find it a lot easier to be able to to touch the buttons i want as opposed to have to navigate through a bunch of screens so i personally like it but i can see how this could be problematic for anyone who expects to get that futuristic you know, never seen an interior like that before in a in a high-end premium car because this is an expensive car. It's 180,000 in Canada. Um, it's about 155 in the U.S. So it's not cheap, and the interior I don't think reflects that. In, in all honesty, it doesn't reflect how expensive and how exclusive this car is. But on the flip side, you really do enjoy the fact that you don't have to be running through screens. So it all depends on what you're looking for, but keep that in mind. In terms of comfort, um, very similar to the Taycan, very similar to the Model S. It does feel a little more cramped than in the Tesla, so uh, some people might not like that. But in terms of the comfort driving on the highway, it's very quiet. You do hear the tire noise in the RS more so than in the Taycan. 4S or a, even a Taycan Turbo S. You really do hear those tires. That's all you hear. Um, but it doesn't, uh, again, overall, the comfort level is, is more than fine. Uh, and then the handling, well, spot on. I mean, more so than an RS6 Avant, more so than an RS7. The fact that you have the weight of the 93.4 kilowatt hour battery right in the middle, the fact that you have power going instantly to both wheels and the fact that the car is is shorter than say an rs7 it's 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 fairly compact just that just all translates into a car with exceptional handling and exceptional balance um, i've had a great time is it is it more so is it sharper than a Taycan? uh you know i mean you it's it, it's little tiny little details and it all comes down to feeling and when it comes to feeling, I would say no. Um, I think it just it's it's feels, if anything, maybe a tad heavier than a, a Porsche Taycan 4S or or Turbo S. Um, a little bit less agile, maybe just a teeny tiny little bit. But um, overall, I mean, you're just going around this roundabout here, I could just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and then you come out and then you have the incredible acceleration and then you have a Subaru Outback. So you slow down. But uh, overall my impressions, um, I'd say, you know, it's, it's the, the main difference between this and a Porsche Taycan is the interior. Um, aside from that, both cars feel very similar. I prefer the way this one is laid out, but I prefer the look of the Taycan. So, you know, it all comes down to personal preference. What I can tell you is that this car feels much more put together 
than a Model S. It feels much more connected than a Model S. And uh, just overall, excellent.